Saquon this, Brian Dable that. Call me Giants when you beat the Cowboys. And the show starts now. Sorry. Right, a little tough love for the G-men coming your way. I want to love you. I want to be sad that I'm not living in New York, walking through Tribeca and having those air vents drip water onto me where I'm like, is this water, sweat, bodily fluids? What is this? New York, I miss you. But last night was terrible. And you can blame the offensive line. You can blame this and blame that. You got to beat the Cowboys. We'll talk about that in a little bit at Up and Adam Show with your tweets. Please, what a game. C.D. Lamb, a tale of two halves there. I'm talking to C.D. Lamb, sitting down with him later this afternoon, so keep it here all week for the interviews with the best players in the NFL. Now, we'll give you some updates around the league before we get into Monday Night Action. Scary news out of Cleveland yesterday. One of my favorites, Miles Garrett and another passenger. They were in a one-car accident. He was discharged from the hospital late last night. He'll continue to undergo more tests. That's all according to NFL Network's Dynamo, Tom Pelissero. We, of course, from Up and Adam Show, sending our very best to Miles Garrett and that passenger. And the Browns' next two games, we looked up, of course, Falcons and Chargers will be keeping our eyes on that. And elsewhere... The Los Angeles Chargers, all pro left tackle, Rashawn Slater. He goes down for the season. It is a torn left biceps tendon. My Chargers are cursed. Do I have, I don't have the helmet up here. Do, oh, yeah, it's up there. We might have to make a change for that white Bengals helmet because I can't with this. I feel awful. They're cursed. Bosa, Herbert, Jalen Guyton, J.C. Jackson, their new addition. I was so excited about Corey Lindsley, all hurts. There is some positive news here. Keenan Allen expected to return to practice this week, but the Chargers are charging, and I do not like it. I do like what the Cowboys did on Monday Night Football. Let's get into it. How impressive was this? A road division win. They don't come easy, and they did it with no Dak Prescott, no curse, no gallop. CD was basically absent in the first half. He had a horrible drop that held them back, too. So this win is incredible. Lamb came alive in the second half. That beauty, chef's kiss, one-handed catch. Uh, the fourth down conversion, there was a touchdown on that same drive, and C.D. ended up on top, and I can't wait to talk to him later today. Uh, the other thing that sort of stuck out to me through three weeks now of this Cowboys 2022 experience, I like the energy of this team. I like how the fan base is handling it. It's why I fell in love with the Bengals last year. They were happy. They were enjoying the ride. They were taking wins as they came, and they weren't picking things apart. And with the Cowboys organization, there is a lot of tear down. There is a lot of how do we pick this apart, create drama. The expectations, the pressure are always at an all-time high. Jerry Jones sets that standard and everything falls under it. So how fun is it that it's just this, what did Michael Irvin say? That it's, they're stealing wins. And I love that. They're stealing wins. Cooper Rush, they, they, they're just trying to steal them until Dak Prescott comes back. And no one expected this. No one expected these sort of wins. And I love it. And there's no quarterback controversy, by the way. That's from the outside. Cowboys fans aren't doing that. They're enjoying this. The, the front office is enjoying this. Jerry Jones can make his little comments, but this is how it should be. Enjoy it. It's a viable shot-taking in control backup. Every team should have one. You have two good quarterback options. One's a great highly paid one who'll get back and lead the team here. You have two great running back options. Why can't you have Pollard and Zeke doing their thing? 176 total rushing yards. It's pretty great. And it was a defensive win. All in all, right? You had Demarcus Lawrence. Don't forget about Demarcus Lawrence. Three sacks last night. Uh, it's another thing the media likes to make a competition. I'm hearing everybody say, Micah Parsons has four, Dula has three, let's see who can have the most. Uh, I bet you Cowboys fans are just happy they have seven. They've got seven and they're on a roll. And Parsons, my goodness, not a sack last night, but this kid, this monster, affects every play. The attention he commands and the attention he diverts out there, it is a thing of beauty. So Cowboys... I mean, I'm in, I, I think the Eagles are going to win it, so I'm, I'm having a tough time here. And Marissa's, woo! But the, the Giants, I'm not worried about at all. I, I, what a nice little story. I loved it. We had Pat Leonard on yesterday. I said, I miss being in New York. I lived there for 10 years, and I never had a team to root for, and the Jets were bad, and the Giants were bad. You have one win, Giants, over the Cowboys in the last 11 against them. One win. Everyone wants to be excited. This morning on our 5, 530 call, I don't know who it was, Conrad or Brian, saying, but Saquon, but Saquon looks good. Did you see this Saquon? I have Jeff Schwartz, who's joining our show in a little bit, online breaking down how good Saquon. I don't care. I'm Saquon's biggest fan. 
I don't care how well he runs out there. I don't care how well he's running despite the offensive line issues that aren't keeping Daniel Jones upright. Beat the Cowboys. Call me when you beat them, and we'll have something to talk about. Is that too tough? It is tough, but there's an, we, I can't get excited about any other win. You look at the Dolphins, and the Dolphins have this beautiful story. They're revamped or whatever. If they don't beat the Bills, it's like, oh, they're great, but they're not there yet. Giants, you look at okay, but you're not there yet. All right, let's get to it. Uh, hopefully he doesn't believe I'm tough loving too much. Defensive extraordinaire, former Colts safety, Dolphins fanatic, and part of the up and down family. Gary Scholar, <laughs> how are you? I'm great. How you doing this morning, Kay? I'm good. Am I being too hard on the Giants? Uh, look, you can show a little more love to Saquon, okay. but you're okay. right. I think, what, <laughs> one in ten now against the, the Cowboys in, in that division and that matchup. So you're on to something there. You got you to get a win there against a team like the Cowboys, especially without that. I do love Saquon. You're right. And we could give him more love. I hope he's comeback player of the year. So the Cowboys win. Cooper Rush seems legit. Do you think Mike McCarthy deserves more credit, though? Uh, yeah, I mean, the whole team does. And, uh, I, you know, Mike McCarthy, I'll probably, I'll probably skip past the head coach. You know me, I'm going straight to defense and Dan Quinn yep. and what they're doing, uh, especially up front. Obviously, Michael Parsons has been unbelievable since coming into, uh, to the league. He's my defensive player of the year uh, pick. But they are him, Demarcus Lawrence, Trevon Diggs. He's been playing great this year great as well. Pick. Got his first pick last night. Malik Hooker, Donovan Wilson, just all those names on that defensive side so of the Mike ball. So Mike McCarthy gets no love. Boat. Mike McCarthy gets no, love. No, no, no. McCarthy, McCarthy gets love. <laughs> Kellen Moore gets love. Cooper Rush. Uh, C.D. Lamb, like you said, bounced back from yeah. obviously a big time drop in the first half. Noah Brown. And then uh, that two-headed monster in the backfield with uh, Pollard and Zeke. And like you said, both of them can get love and touches. Yeah. I love seeing Zeke, uh, Pollard get, get more involved in the offense as well. But, How um, hard you know, is it? Kudos all around in Dallas. How hard is it? Kudos all around in Dallas is right. And Dan Quinn, they better just enjoy that while they have it because I have a feeling he'll be a head coach in, real oh, yeah. soon in the National Football League. How hard is it when you're having a, a real bad game to turn it around in the second half? Like, CD has that drop. Twitter's going crazy. He knows it's ugly. <laughs> and Do we not give enough credit to turning it around like he did? That can't be easy. I mean, that's what you're supposed to do. As a player, you got to have short-term memory. Uh, you know, quarterbacks, obviously, I played defensive back. You know, you get beat for a touchdown. Um, you drop a pick. Whatever it is, you got to bounce back and get right to that next play. Um, that's what it is. You can't let that same play, that same failure, uh, beat you more than once. And CD came back and made an unbelievable catch, that one-headed catch mm -hmm. um, on the side of the end zone, which helped my parlay hit. So I'm a big CD fan uh, today, man. But, uh, you know, that's what players have to do. Uh, regardless of what position yeah. you play, you got to have short-term memory and bounce back. Control room, I cannot believe we don't have that CD catch. How do we not have that CD one-handed grab playing Come right now? On. What, what are we doing back there if not showing that? Darius, uh, yes, I, the same game parlay. Congratulations. How do you feel? Hey, I feel vindicated. I hey. feel great. Last week, we came close. I had Ryan Tannehill. His over didn't hit on the rush yards. Um, I should have took Daniel Jones. His over is almost a lock on the rush, but um, it hit, and I feel great about it. I had Dallas Moneyline, uh, Noah Brown. Oh, there it is. It's up right there. Yep. And it hit. It finally hit. So now we get hot, and now we'll, I have a next one for next Monday. We love it. All right, let's talk about your Dolphins. Yes, they are yours. They, uh, You have affectionately owned them all season, of course, and they took down one of the top dogs in the AFC, 21 to 19. You called them to win the AFC East. That was you calling your shot. Do you want to get a little spicier three weeks in? How far will they go? You know, the vibes are high down here in South Florida. I know we got a hurricane on the way, and every, I want everybody to stay safe, do what you got to do, shelter up, but the vibes <laughs> are high down here at Hard Rock Stadium. I might get a little spicy. I'm feeling real Super Bowlish right now, okay? Two is looking good. Our defense, I mean, they were on the field for 90 plays. And that son, you saw those buff Buffalo offensive players were dropping like flies at the end. We held them to 17 points, really, nine, you know, 17 minus the butt fumble um, in that in that hot sun <laughs> with Josh Allen. So, I mean, just tremendous job all around. Tua didn't throw the ball around a lot, but he came back from injury, made a huge play to Waddle late in the game. So I'm feeling good, man. We're top dogs. We beat the Buffalo Bills. They were crowned, you know, Super Bowl champion. Josh Allen was the MVP before the season started. So I'm feeling really, really good about my Dolphins right now.
Conrad and Marissa, we got to get the odds at FanDuel for Super, uh, Super Bowl win for the Dolphins. And I, I have a feeling Darius Butler's money will be put in that column. Uh, I wanted to ask you about Tyreek. We're seeing this matchup on the screen, right? Dolphins, Bengals, that's your Thursday night football situation. Your guy, Tyreek, is looking forward to it. He had this to say about taking on an old friend. Take a look. <laughs> looking forward to the challenge. It's going to be fun, you know. And I can't wait to go against Eli Apple, man. I owe you, boy. I owe you. I'm here. The cheetah is here. That's it. Intel. Is he joking? I don't know. The last time they saw each other, I know, it was the AFC Championship game. So what are your thoughts? And if you're Eli, how are you responding? I mean, I love it. You know, e Eli went full hill, full troll mode last year, you know, sending, sending uh, Tyreek Hill and Hartman Super Bowl tickets and called him a little boy. So now, you know, players don't forget. Tyreek doesn't forget. And, and what I loved even more about this clip is that he had no clue that he was even playing the Bengals on a short week. That's how locked in <laughs> Tyreek he Hill, Hill is. I think he was he like, knew. wait, who we got? I think Eli? he knew. Oh, no. Nah. You, know, you know what, Case? Some play, you know, different players are different. Some guys, they know every team, every game, eight, nine weeks out. Yeah. And some guys are really one game at a time. And uh, But either way, Tyreek Hill, the cheetah, he's going to be locked in. And he probably had this one circle, even though he forgot. But I'm looking forward to this matchup. And you know I got my guy cheetah. I got cheetah. I got Waddle. Like I said, they only ran, what, 38 plays? This last Sunday, so they're gonna have fresh legs. So you think short week. you're a defensive guy, Darius? You're telling me that that Eli is no match for Tyreek and Waddle? No match. <laughs> I mean, no, and that's not just a, an Eli Apple thing. Nobody can. This is this is the Steph Curry of the NFL with Tyreek yeah. Hill. I mean, the, what he does defense, you can't put one guy on him. And you, you definitely can't put Eli Apple on him. Now, Eli Apple could, you know, make me eat these words uh, on Thursday, but I got I, I got my money on Cheetah and Waddle, who had a huge game this Sunday as well. I mean, they are second and third as far as ranking for receiving yards this season in the NFL. Waddle and Tyreek. By the way, the Super Bowl, as I'm told in my ear, plus 1,600. I don't really know what that means, but that's... That's the yeah, bet 100 win 16. That's a good bet. It's a solid bet. I think the Chargers, that was my first pick going into the season. Okay. So I may just. Well, know. those Chargers are banged <laughs> up as always. The worst luck in the entire National Football League. Uh, tell me this, because that's obviously, you know, people call it bulletin board material, all of that. What is the craziest thing a wide receiver ever told you or ever tried to get under your skin with? Um, man, you know what? I didn't I didn't participate in a lot of trash talk, but a receiver who actually wore that jersey that Eli Apple's wearing, uh Chad Ocho Cinco, <laughs> who is known to talk. This dude was the only player, the only receiver to ever talk trash to me during a route, like literally in the middle of his route. What he's is he telling saying? me, yeah, hey man, hey, I got the best feet in the league. Just, just, just. And I mean, he came out of that break, and I'm like, hey, you're on to something. You're on to something, 85, but uh, 85, but it was all always friendly, but he would definitely talk trash uh, all throughout the game and even throughout the down, which was, uh, which was nuts. I would, I'm surprised you didn't get involved in trash talking. You tell it like it is, you like to talk. You know, you got to let your play do the talk, do the talk when you're out there. And you, you know, you can get sidetracked, you can get talk. Some guys are better at it than others. Um, so you don't want to get thrown off your game. I actually saved my trash talking for the basketball court. 24-hour fitness, Ooh. LA fitness. That's where <laughs> I do all my talking. When I have that helmet on, I'm locked it. in. We got I got to win between the whistles. So Ocho Cinco's talking all this noise mid-route. What are you saying back to him? Nothing? Absolutely nothing. It, it, it was not, look, when the guy's right, he's right. And it was a point where, now look, we were blowing him out. We were beating the brakes <laughs> okay, off okay, the Bengals. Okay, and for a DB, a young DB, that's not necessarily a great thing because now I'm matched up with 85 and they're down three scores. So they're throwing 40 times in the second half with Carson Palmer at quarterback. <laughs> so uh, it, 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 it was a rough one for you, boy, Kay. It was a rough Dares, one. Darius, that is amazing. I love it. I want to go to Lifetime Fitness with you, 24-hour fitness, crunch, wherever you go. That's amazing. Uh, quickly, who's your, you know, who are you picking in this game? I think I have a feeling you're going to pick the Dolphins. Yeah. Absolutely. And I can't even believe we're disrespected. I think we're underdogs, three-and-a-half-point dogs on the road the last time I checked. Easy Dolphins pick. Come on, what are we doing here? The Dolphins haven't started 4-0 since 1995. We'll see if they do it under the bright lights. Andrew Whitworth will join us. He's on the ground in Cincinnati, ahead of this one, working, of course, for Amazon Prime's coverage of uh, Thursday Night Football. So last time on the show, you were, you were hitting the panic button heavy about Matt Ryan. Did he do anything on Sunday in that win over the Chiefs to make you feel a little differently? 
You know what? I, I, I was hitting the, the panic button again in that first half with those two fumbles. I mean, too many fumbles to start this season off. Uh, but he did. He finished strong. And he, he finished strong when we needed him most. Put a big-time drive together. Um, hit, hit Jelani Woods, the rookie, for two touchdowns. One to start the game and then one to end it. And that was huge. But this game, uh, you know, this, this game was won on the back of that defensive front. That defensive front dominated this Chiefs offense. And uh, they looked really... They look really, they look kind of regular out there without Tyreek Hill, K. Okay? So I might have to downgrade him from that 93 gas to probably 89 after what I saw these last uh, yeah. two weeks. But and we'll see. Patrick Mahomes, Eric Bieniemy, and Andy Reid uh, most likely will figure it out. But uh, that coach defensive line, I mean, they, they, they played with their hair what on fire. Here? What happened here in this? You know, Tell me. <sighs> You know, things happen. You know, this is the point of the game. Like I said, the defensive line was getting after 15 the whole time. Uh, Mahomes, he wanted a shot, as he should. One of the best quarterbacks, if not the best quarterback in the league. And he wanted to take a shot before the half. Eric being to be the coach was like, hey, you know what? Let's just take this in the halftime. Okay. Let's figure some things out and let's come out in the other half. So I think both, both guys are right here. And these type of spats, these type of conversations happen all yeah. the time on the sideline. I don't think it's any big news, but I think Coach B &B was right. And I also think Patrick Mahomes is right, too. As a player, you want it, you want it in your hands. You want to take a shot at that point in the game. I, I was there in Indy this weekend, and I, was getting, I got to hang out with you know, Shaquille Leonard, who they don't even have, so he'll be a force. And, and I was telling them, stop the run. And, they, of course, Gus is really good at stopping the run, and they were able to do that uh, and shut down Clyde Edwards-Alaire and all of that. But to me, you know, I was trying to t explain to them why I think that they'll win the Colts. And, and it was because the Chiefs had 10 days. It was because they had all this time. And I think that they somehow, this always happens with the Chiefs, right? They always end up losing to a team that has no business beating them the way that they are. <laughs> and that is the Colts with Matt Ryan and two fumbles in the first half. It, why does this keep, you're not worried about the Chiefs down the stretch? That they, I, I don't know if that's that, it's, they'd play down to competition or whatever, but I sort of knew they'd be caught sleeping. And Andy Reid even said after the game, he said, that I didn't have them ready to go. Yeah, you know what, Andy Reid, Patrick Mahomes, though, they, they will be in it, you know, at the end, you know, when it comes down to the final four, the, the final, you know, that, that division around the player, like they'll still be in it. They'll figure things out offensively and defensively with Spags. So I got no doubt about that team. Now, can they get over the hump and win a Super Bowl without 10 out there? That's something we got to see. And like I said, it, they look, it's a much easier to bottle 15 up when you don't have cheat out there running around and a defensive line can get after him. But uh, I was I was shocked. I, I, I'm going to be honest yeah. with you. And I was looking at this line all week at five and a half. And I'm like, you know what? This line is kind of fishy. You did. That, that is close. But uh, I should have listened to you, Kay, and I should have no, known. Not me, but, you, but I was going to say, you don't understand the, the Kay Adams bump when Kay Adams is in town and gives them a little pep talk. A little, you didn't, you didn't nope. consider that? That fan duel, that should have moved the lines a little bit. I think. I'm going to have to talk it, to somebody. It must have. It must have. Um, okay, so now we are going to, for the very first time here, visit a new destination together. Where are we going? It's a one-way ticket to something my producers came up with called Shutdown City. Ooh. Yeah, some of the NFL's best wide receivers have been shut down. What are we looking at here? Oh, we're looking at Patrick Sertain the second. Now, obviously, his dad, Dolphins legend, Patrick Sertain. But, I mean, coming out of Bama, this guy was a can't-miss prospect. He's been locking guys down all year. You see him right here with IU. Locking, I mean, this guy, his technique is unbelievable from the press, from all start off the season, matching up with DK Metcalf, following him all over the field. This guy can do it all. So I love his game from top to bottom, on the field, off the field franchise cornerstone at the quarterback position. So he's definitely in shutdown city. Patrick Sertain. Is, South Florida boy too. Is Gotta Jeff love that. Is Jeff Okuda in shutdown shit city? Jeff Okuda is the second guy okay. in shutdown city. This is his third year coming in the league as a top three pick. Obviously expectations were super high. Tasked some of the best tape that I saw coming out of Ohio State. And now he's finding his groove. Had a big injury, Achilles injury last year. Missed most of last year. But he's coming out. He, he had a great matchup against Justin Jefferson this past weekend. I know they caught the L, but he's been playing lights out all year. Love to see it. Maybe it's that number one jersey. He's back in that number one, but oh. he's doing his thing. So Jeff Okuda is in Shutdown City, but it's one more guy. Okay. It's one more guy, and we share the same namesake. He is the mayor 
of Shutdown City. <laughs> Darius Slay doesn't go by Darius, though. No big play Slay. I mean, he had an iconic, probably defensive player of the year type performance to start it off against Justin Jefferson on Monday Night Football. So Slay is the mayor. Big play Slay is the mayor. But these guys are playing great ball at that cornerback position. I can't wait to see how they finish the season. Okay, if there's a new candidate for shut mayor of Shutdown City, tweet us at Up and Adam Show. And of course, with Darius Butler, and we will get that going. Uh, you are incredible. Thank you. Enjoy the Dolphins win. In, and we will talk to you soon. Thank you, Kay. Mr. Love it. Same Day Parlay. You got to teach me what that is here at some <laughs> point because I say it and I don't know what I'm talking about. Coming up, does your fantasy lineup need a little refresher? That I can handle. That I'm good at. That is my area of expertise, in fact. I'll tell you, you need to pick up on the waiver wire. Andrew Whitworth is joining the show. We can't wait. He's in Cincinnati. The Whiteout Bengals helmet. We'll get into it. We are through three weeks of the fantasy football season. Welcome to Up and Adams, and you need to make some roster adjustments. Here I am because I love you. Waiver wire picks, and we are looking at Trevor Lawrence. I'm saying it. I wanted Tua here in this spot, but Tua's owned, actually, and Trevor Lawrence is rostered in less than 50% of fantasy leagues. He had two touchdown passes week two, three touchdown passes in week three. He averaged just under 20 fantasy points a game. You got Christian Kirk there. Clearly, they have a connection. Not a bad thing to bring him in. Probably a bad thing to pay him all that money. That's okay, though. This is fantasy football we're talking about. Evan Ingram, Zay Jones, they are paying off and thriving under Doug Peterson, who has not gotten enough credit for his work there. It's a real coach down there in Jacksonville in a tough matchup in Philly next week, but then he gets Houston, Indy, and the Giants. In Chicago, looking at the running backs, dare I submit Khalil Herbert? I am. I like it because he's rostered in less than 5% of leagues. David Montgomery, of course, left Sunday's game early with a knee and an ankle injury. Herbert went off for 157 and two touchdowns on 20 carries. You love the volume. You love the production. If Montgomery misses time, and he likely will, Herbert will be an immediate RB2, and he's playing for a team that runs the ball and more than 65% of their plays. Simple math, it makes sense. Next up, let's keep the running backs going. Alexander Madison, rostered in 39% of leagues. He's already the best handcuff in fantasy. He has been for years, but if Dalvin Cook misses time with his shoulder, Madison becomes an RB1. Six games as a starter, 477 rush yards, 216 receiving yards, and five touchdowns. Mwah! I could kiss those fantasy numbers. I love it. He faces the Saints and the Bears next. And those, my friends, are two of the worst rushing defenses in the business. Let's talk about Romeo Dobbs. Dobbs the Palooza, as myself and Peter Bukowski were talking about it. This is the Packers wide receiver. Eight catches for 73 yards and a touchdown against Tampa Bay. First receiver not named Devonta Adams to catch eight from Rodgers since week one of 2018. Fun fact for you. Chemistry is clearly building. I think it's all those lunches they had, sharing their Lunchables, exchanging their Cheetos for the banana chips, all of it. It all makes sense. Uh, if Rodgers trusts you, he will throw you the ball. It's kind of that simple. If not, he won't. Watkins is on IR. Expect Dobbs to play in three wide receiver sets with Lazard and Cobb starting this week against New England. Finally, if you're looking for a tight end, David and Joku. How is he rostered in only 50% of leagues? Did all of you give up on your fantasy seasons already? He caught 9 of 10 for 89 and a touchdown against Pittsburgh. He gets the Falcons next. Disley got in the end zone last week against Atlanta. He signed a four-year $56.75 million contract extension in the offseason. That sort of tells you what the Browns think of Njoku. I don't like when he does those splits uh, celebrations in the end zone because he's going to pull something and not be available for my fantasy team. But he's been awesome. So to review, David Njoku at the bottom. I gave you one wide receiver this week. It is Romeo Dobbs. Uh, and you should grab him if he is available. He's rostered, like I said, in just 4% of leagues. The Vikings running back, Madison. Herbert for Chicago. A lot of NFC North love there. And then Trevor Lawrence. Again, tough matchup in Philly next week. Then it gets Houston, Indy, and the Giants. We've got more up in Adams. Up next, Jeff Schwartz will join us. Darius Butler was incredible. But hey, it's Andrew Whitworth. Oh, are you practicing golfing with Eric Weddle and Danny Woodhead? I'm so glad you made time for us. Coming to us live from Cincinnati. An absolute legend, Walter Payne Man of the Year, Super Bowl champion, joining us after this.
He was in that confetti, made, I was crying, he's talking to his kids about how he's gonna hang it up, and I miss seeing him on the field, but I'm loving seeing him on Amazon's Thursday Night Football coverage. Joining us now is a 16-year NFL vet who played offensive tackle for the Bengals and Rams, with whom he just won a Super Bowl. Welcome to 2021 Walter Payton NFL Man of the Year, Andrew Whitworth, how are you? I'm doing great, just enjoying a little week in Cincinnati, Ohio. I love it, I hope you're eating your way through that whole city. Uh, I'm definitely having great meals at night, and all the moms in Cincinnati are kicking my butt at Orange Theory in the mornings. <laughs> so it's it's great. Wait, I was, why aren't they posting about this? That would go viral. That's amazing. You know, I try and run in. You know, during the stretch period, I just take off out the door, right? I try to get out of there as fast <laughs> as I can, save myself the embarrassment. My producers were saying as we were checking in with you during the break that Andrew Whitworth is just so huggable. Like you just want to see him and give him a hug. Do you have that experience with fans? I do. My wife jokes all the time. She loves all the older ladies that love to come and get a hug. You know, it's like as soon as they see me, they just they don't want a handshake. They don't want a signature. They just want a hug from the big fella. It's amazing. Well, you're currently there in Cincinnati because there's a game on Thursday night. Dolphins, Bengals, you're working as part of Amazon Prime's Thursday night football coverage. Congratulations. It has been amazing to watch. Oh, thank you so much. It's a lot of fun. It's a great crew, and, and we've had a good time. Being in the arena, I don't know if I really realized how fun that would be, just being down in the stadium, on the field. Uh, being a part of those crowds has been really special so far. Well, tell me about it, because you do have this unique and, and sort of special role to start the season. You are, you're in it, man. You really, you are in it, and that's not easy to do. You're with the fans, rain or shine, win or loss. You are getting the heartbeat of that fan base and all of the vibes. And listen, you've been around NFL fans your whole career, Andrew. Are you seeing a different side? What have you learned about these passionate people so far? It's been fun to have a chance every week to kind of be in the crowd, go through and be in the stadium and sit there and hear the the roars and chants and the passion from the teams. I think when you're playing, sometimes the anxiety and pressure of the game, you don't pay as much attention to that unless really maybe it's your home crowd. But uh, to really be able to have a chance to just stop and pause for a minute and appreciate what makes this game so special. I mean, the reality is none of us have any of these jobs if it's not for the fans that support this game. It's amazing. We like, are excited to see your coverage in Cincinnati. Are you going to wear all white for the whiteout, the helmets? What, do you, what are you wearing on Thursday? I know it's a big, big week. I actually saw uh, the owner, Mike Brown, yesterday. I went and stopped by the stadium. He, oh. You know, he's not much for change very often. So this all white black thing on the stadium is going to be uh, right up his alley. You know, he's a big fashion guy. So Mike was Mike and I had a good <laughs> laugh. Just uh, he's just going to be there to watch the game and support his team. I don't know if he's going to be wearing all white and black himself, but I'm going to have my best outfit. That's okay. for sure. You always do, Andrew. You always do. Uh, and so you spent, you know, the first 11 seasons of your career there. Bengals got their first win of the season last week against the Jets. They have, it was a must-win situation for them, of course. The main story has been about the offensive line. It's about absorbing sacks and Joe Burrow. Chris Collinsworth was on with me last week, and he said Burrow needs to be more accountable. He's the face of the franchise. He's got to get the ball out. Where do you stand? Yeah, I think it's really a mixture of things. I mean, there's obviously moments where this offensive line has to give him more time, but I think last week that was definitely an improvement. But also, Joe's got to be you know, mindful of the fact that he loves to get the ball down the field. Sometimes he loves to hold it and try and find those plays down the field. But there's going to be times in the season where he's got to give his line confidence and his offense confidence to just say, hey, I'm going to get the ball out. I'm going to hit my back foot, take the best read I can and get the ball out of my hand and just try and move us to the next down. Because sometimes it's really about efficient football and not having the negative plays and the things that set you mm -hmm. back that help you have success. And I think that's really more where it's at than really any one person or any one group's fault. It's, well, it's really well said. Bengals, Dolphins on TNF on Amazon Prime. Tua and the Dolphins, how impressive. They've taken on the Patriots, the Ravens, and the Bills. What impresses you most about what these Dolphins have pulled off so far? I think there's a lot of things said. I mean, obviously, you know defensively how they've played over the last couple of years, and they just seem to, you know, repeat these zero looks and all these pressures, and teams just don't know how to handle it. But offensively, I think, Obviously, you knew Mike McDaniels was going to have a big impact. And, and that offense and what San Francisco and the Niners did in the running game and all the motions and change of strengths mm -hmm. and all this. But I think what's been most impressive is that I think Tua has really let it loose. I mean, he has just let it go. It's not just that these plays are drawn up and they're great. And sometimes in San Fran, you hear them Shanahan plays where somebody's just wide open. But it hadn't really been that. It's been, you know what? Yeah, there's some plays where they've motioned people and gotten people wide open. But he's also not been afraid to just pull the trigger trust what he's being taught to do, trust his eyes and letting the ball go. And I think it's impressive to see how aggressive he's been, not just his team, 
and how they've played. And how much chemistry they've built when you have a new coach, you've got new pieces there, new additions like Tyree Kill. For them to be like this going into week four is super impressive. Now the Rams, you won a Super Bowl with them, the confetti, the whole thing. They're winning games, but they don't quite look Super Bowl ready. At least they don't look as like as, as good as some of these other teams in the NFL do right now. What's going on with your Rams? Do you find yourself wanting to text them in the middle of their games? Uh, you know what? It, it's definitely different. I think watching the games, they're the hardest team to watch for me, for sure, just because uh, <laughs> I feel like I'm down there on the field right now sometimes. But I, I think it's a mixture of things. Anytime you've had the success they had last season, you know, you're a little bit more beat up just from going through a Super Bowl year. We've seen it with Cincinnati as well. And you, it takes a little bit to get going. And I think really for them, they just seemed a little off to me, just, you know, in the opener. And then I think over the last two weeks, you've seen them kind of pick it up again. I thought mm -hmm. it was a great performance against the Cardinals. That's a good football team with a lot of talent. And so far, they're kind of just building in blocks. Nothing explosive where you're like, oh, man, you know, look out. But you know what? A little better every week. And I think that's the most important thing. Sometimes these championship teams know it's about how you play in November and December that's really going to matter. And that brings these me. first eight games, yeah. there's a lot of explosions, but it doesn't mean it's the end. It brings me to my next question, which, of course, it's all up to your wife because you're a very smart man, Andrew. But as we sit here going, I can't believe it's week four. Thursday Night Football on, on Amazon Prime, you're going to be there. Has there been a performance or a team that's got you thinking about it yet? Or, or you know, anybody so far this season that you're thinking you would consider potentially coming back? No, I really haven't. I mean, I've enjoyed this so far. It's been so much fun. I mean, I told somebody the other day, they're paying me money to talk about the game I love that changed awesome. my life. I mean, this is unbelievable. So I've really enjoyed being exactly where my feet are. That's always kind of how I've been, who I've been as a person. And uh, you know what? Who knows what happens? I, I've always said, you never say never. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> you know, things are always out there. But hey. you know what? I really enjoy what I do, and I'm happy where I'm at. Hey, who's a quarterback that you'd love to block for? Let's just let's just let's change the question. Is there a quarterback right, in the league well, you'd love to block for? Uh, you know what? I think. You know, obviously Stafford's number one because that's my guy. Uh, you know, he won me a Super Bowl, so he'll always be number one in that list. Uh, but I think there's some great offenses out there. There's some fun ones. I mean, I, I think, you know, obviously the Eagles, that looks like a really fun offense to play in. Uh, really the things they've been able to do. And this Miami offense looks great, too. I mean, I, I love any of these where you're going to move the uh, quarterback point a lot, a lot of runs, a lot of play action. Stop that list because it's not happening. Uh <laughs> But there, there's some fun offenses right now in the NFL and a, a lot that I wish I got a chance to play with. I wish I was about 10 y years younger because they make a lot of money, too. So that would have been a lot all. of fun as well. Don't we all? Now, another guy that you love, not just Stafford, Eric Weddle. He is your former teammate. He comes on the show uh, every week and we hang out. We got to talk in a little golf for some reason because of Danny Woodhead. And for his dream foursome, he chose Danny Woodhead, Adam Thielen, and you. Why do you think he chose you? And what's your relationship like with Eric? I'm getting to know him this season and I, I couldn't love him more. That's my dog. I mean, he's an unbelievable guy, man. Uh, it's it's hard to really put into words just what what a man he is. He's he's a man. He's a man amongst men, that's for sure. And I, I think really our relationships over the years, just playing in the league, the appreciation. We have some great stories together, playing against each other, Bengals, Chargers, you know. And then he w moves on to the Ravens, and I get a chance to play him as a as a Ram. So we've had a long history. We played some golf together. We've done it all. Uh, you know, our dinner clubs last couple of years with the Rams has been a lot of fun. You know, it's a little deal, you know, okay, it's it's the inside things of the league, right? And that so is so Arizona, scary. Yeah, so we start a little dinner club that's his big deal, and we go once a week. We all go out to eat with the guys and kind of pick little spots around town, and uh, that's our fellowship time after practice. So he started that, and he's just a good man, you know, and a great friend. Uh, I love that. Who's a better golfer, though? Uh, you know what? Right now, I think I got E Dub. You know, he he may have been practicing a lot. Well, actually, no. You know, he's had surgery on his pec, so he's probably okay. off a little bit. I'll probably I'll take it right now. But who knows? You know, we got to see two years into retirement, maybe. You know, see who's who's there, who's been practicing. Does he outdrive you? No, he's not outdriving me. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, you know, there might be some other part of the game he could beat me in, but that's not it. We love it. What are you most looking forward to for Thursday night? Oh, man, I think it's going to be an electric atmosphere. I mean, you really look at it. The Cincinnati Bengals are building. They, they're building off this first win of the season. They're really excited. You know, I've gotten a chance yesterday. I, I saw Zach Taylor for a minute, Joe Burrow, and you can tell that there's an upbeat of confidence, right? You finally got that win. And then this explosive Dolphins team's coming in that defensively had, you know, an insane amount of plays on Sunday, and now you're going to turn around on a quick week. There's going to be some interesting things to this game. And can the Bengals knock off the 3-0 and team? Or did the Dolphins continue their reign? I think it's going to be a lot of fun, a lot of explosions, and uh, some 
players that are known for explosive plays. So Jamar Chase, Tyreek Hill, oh, yeah. let's see what happens. From the dog pound to the jungle. Andrew Whitworth, enjoy Orange Theory, and we will see you in the white getup, I'm hoping, for Thursday night. All white. Let's do it. You're amazing. Thank you. Eric Weddle's not going to like those answers, but we're going to have to get his take as he joins our show every Thursday next right here on Up and Adams. I mean, he just makes me smile. Andrew Whitworth is the best, the most huggable member of sports media. Listen to me. Everyday wins make your day so much better. Duh. That's why FanDuel Casino has a new daily game free to play. It's called Reward Machine. It's a free game, like I said, free, F-R-E-E, -E, and it gives, gives players a chance to win up to $2,000 in casino bonus every day. All you have to do is log in daily and spin for a free chance at rewards. FanDuel wants you to win. Play Reward Machine for a free chance at Everyday Wins only on FanDuel Casino. Okay, our next guest, an NFL veteran, current gambling analyst at Fox Sports, Jeff Schwartz. Two straight linemen, Kay. I love it. I know. I know you did. What did you make of what he said about Joe Burrow and, uh, and you know, how it's a mix of things? Collinsworth said Joe Burrow's got to be more accountable, but obviously the offensive line has to play well as well. Yeah, there, there's many issues. I think we saw a bunch of them corrected with the game plan on Sunday against the Jets. You got to force Burrow to get the ball out sooner. I know he doesn't want to do that at times. He's looking for the home run play, but you can get him the ball out sooner with design of plays. I thought they were more creative offensively, especially in the run game as well. So there's there's plenty to blame. Offensive line hasn't been great, but Burrow kind of sits in the pocket, doesn't look comfortable at times. I thought they did a much better job. And you can do this in an offense. You force him to get the ball out. Okay. Short routes, easy throws, one read, things like that. Much better job on Sunday. What is this? This I'm the least cool person in the world because I've had nine guests wearing this sweater thing. And everyone from yes. Carmen Vitali to you and some guy named Duke Lane. keeps retweeting it. So what is the story here? Lane, Yeah, Lane Johnson wore it too last week. Um, my, my buddy Duke Mannyweather trains offensive linemen, including Lane Johnson, and O-Line Masterminds is his brand. It's his company. We have a big seminar that we do every summer uh, in uh, in Dallas. We had we had five, no, well, we had three Hall of Famers there this year, I okay. think, I believe. So it's a lot of fun. We can get you. We can get you I a want, shirt. Can, How I, about can that? I please get a shirt? It's all yes, I want. I, I want will, a shirt. Duke will get you a shirt. Yes. Everyone we'll has one, and then Duke's always reaching. And I'm like, somebody play. So I, I told Conrad Company, our, our intrepid producer, I'm like, you're clearly getting a cut of this as we're booking guests that wear these shirts. Like, what's <laughs> going on? At least tell me so I'm involved or or, or I'm cool. Uh, real quick before we get into the reason you're here, just to talk about the week four slate. Uh, Darius Butler, very excited about this parlay. Situation. I don't know if you saw. Maybe Conrad or somebody can explain. Should he be so excited? It's like a very rare, cool thing to do. As I'm a novice in the gambling space. He what did he do, Conrad? What did he do? He hit all of his games. This is what he did. Oh. Yeah. It's, oh. oh. People, yeah. It's, it's a pretty good. It's a pretty good wager. I mean, these don't normally hit. So you place ten of them. You hit one of them. You're you're close to making your money back. Um, you're yeah, not I mean, that impressed. It's good. It's a good wager. He won. I mean, winning wager is always always good to do. These are hard to do though. I mean, plus eight 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 seventy seven. I mean, it's eight to one. So you're not going to hit these very often. But good for him. It was a good a, a profitable night for him uh, with his wager. I'm trying to understand like how cool is this, you know? And so I'm like, and then everyone in the control room was really excited, and you're like, yeah, yeah that's pretty good. So I'm gonna have to learn more as we go along here. All right, any match matchups that you're particularly taking interest in? Let's start with Thursday night football. Dolphins at Bengals. What do I need to look at? All right, I think we need to look at the snaps the Bengals defense played this weekend. 90 snaps on defense. Right now, a short week going to Cincinnati, who's feeling better about their team right now. I got to think the Bengals um, feel really good about, about where they are heading into this game. And to his injuries, right? Is it his back? Is it his ankle? Right. What's happening with him? I mean, to me, on a short week here, you got to take the home team. Three and a half is not a great number. I'd maybe look for three closer to kickoff, possibly, or buy down to three. But to me, the Bengals are, are the side here just because of how beat up the Dolphins are, how tired they are. 90 plays, guys, is a lot. We see even teams that have to play an overtime game and come back the next Sunday struggle in that Sunday game. Now it's Thursday night. They're playing after a short week. So right. um, I think the Bengals here are certainly the play. Burrow's been sacked 15 times this season. That's a number I don't like tied for the most uh, with Carson Wentz. Yeah. Not great, but he was sacked only twice against the Jets. Producers, this is a message for me to you. I'm not talking about the Thursday night game again until one segment on Thursday night. This entire Tuesday show has been about the Dolphins and the Bengals. I don't know how that happened, but I'm over it. Eagles taking on the Jags. Yeah, yes. Talk about something else other than, other than Dolphins and Bengals, please. 
we know the Eagles are good, right? And they're doing a lot of good things, especially in the first half of a bunch of these games, right? They're getting out to big leads. They're not scoring very much in the second half, but they're doing enough very early on to blitz teams and they kind of just sit back and let their defensive line go to work. But guys, Jacksonville's really good. It's not like a fluke thing they're doing. It's right. not just, oh my God, that you know they won a couple games. They're beating the teams up front, winning the, the battle and the offensive defensive lines. Trevor Lawrence has not been touched the last three two games, only two, I think three pressures total in the last two games. They're winning the same way the Eagles are, right? Offensive, defensive line, smart quarterback play, good coaching, they're putting the players in the right position. To me, six and a half points is way too many in this game. It opened up at seven. I grabbed it right away. It might even go down right now. I take it now. Might get to six, five and a half by kickoff. I think Jacksonville here will keep this game very close. And like I mentioned, the Eagles in the second half of games have not played as well. Okay. Jacksonville will not give up in this game. I like Jacksonville to cover this game. Eagles have the NFL's number one total offense this season. I do like the revenge game for Doug Peterson. Not that it is that, but I think Doug Peterson isn't getting enough credit for what he's doing in Jacksonville. A pedigreed Super Bowl winning coach goes down there and changes the culture real quick. Trevor Lawrence, I'm sure, very happy with what he's got cooking down there in Jacksonville. Yes. That's a great game. Two teams coming off some tough losses, though. It's the Chiefs at Buccaneers. Yeah, I got to go the under here at 45 and a half. It might be pretty, pretty square. But you look at what's happening with Kansas City right now. Their offensive line is not playing as well. They have the talent to play much better. I think Pat Mahomes is still trying to figure out who his best wide receiver is in certain situations. So I think at times we're seeing that offense kind of bog down as he figures out, which is which is normal, right? And then for Tampa Bay, at least offensively right now, they look like a team missing all their wide receivers and half their offensive linemen. Yeah, they are. Just not in sync right now. It's hard for Tom Brady to find places to throw the ball, and they're led by their defense as well. By the way, Kansas City's defense is playing some really good football right now, right? They were gifted. The Colts were those five, those, excuse me, those five yards early in the game for that touchdown off that muff punt. So, to me, the under is the play here. Very low scoring game, 2017, somewhere around there. Yeah. Um, I think Kansas City can still win this game on the road. This game possibly will be moved anyways. We'll find out where they play it. True. But to me, the under is certainly in play here because both teams are led by their defense where their offense is still kind of finding their way. When it comes to what you like to do with the betting stuff, yes. <laughs> with the weather thing, how much do you take that into account seriously? How much do I, uh, as, a, as a novice yes. in, this, in, the, in this space, how do I account for that? You look at wind first. Wind affects totals more than anything else. Uh, players can throw, they can throw the ball in the rain, they can throw the ball in the snow. Always take the over in snow games. Unless again, it's really windy. Everyone freaks out, they bet the under. If it's not windy, everyone can throw the ball in the snow. We've seen Tom Brady do it before. You can throw in the snow, you can throw in the rain, it's the wind. If you see wind, take the under. The wind affects the kicking game, obviously. Balls are offline. Um, you know, look, look, if it's a monsoon, yes, maybe the under is in play here as the ball is slippery, but really for the passing game, it's the wind. The wind is the concern, look at that first. It's a great call. I know you're saying the Chiefs defense is great. Spags always has them make a play, but they only have two takeaways through three games this season. I'd like to see that improve. Hard to do against the GOAT, of course, but I, uh, I would like to see that change as the season goes on. Josh Allen and the Bills, they're in Baltimore to take on Lamar Jackson and the Ravens. The wind, you really just taught me something there, Jeff. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, there, I don't know if there's a wind in this game, but I'll tell you what, there's two quarterbacks that are doing everything for their teams right now. And kind of just as I worry about uh, the Dolphins on this short week, I worry about Buffalo. They you know, get 90 plays on offense. That's a lot of plays and a lot of running around for Josh Allen. Same for Lamar Jackson. He's accounted for look at, all 12 touchdowns so far this season, more than 30 teams in the NFL so far. So they're very reliant on just him. I think, though, that with the, the number at plus three and a half, you get that little extra half point there. I would lean toward the home dog at the moment right now, even though I think Buffalo is a more talented team. You have to check on Buffalo's injury situation right now. Their defense played well, minus five of their secondary players this past weekend. But you have to look at that heading in this weekend in game two. Can the Ravens exploit this? So I will lean the underdog here ever so slightly right now as we figure out the injury situation. For both teams, by the way, the, the Ravens might have a left tackle back. Okay. And we see all the injuries for the, for the Bills. I will say, Bills offense seems to typically bounce back with Josh Allen at yes. the helm here. The numbers, they, the Bills haven't scored fewer than 20 points in back-to-back -back games since 2020 when it was weeks five and six. So we'll see what Josh Allen can do, but fatigue might set in. Not a bad call there. Last one for you, NFC West showdown Rams Niners. Yeah, so before the playoff matchup this past season in the NFC Championship game, the Niners had won this game six times in a row. 
And there's something about Kyle Shanahan knowing how to go against the Sean McVay team that I think really puts the Niners in an advantage. Yes, their offense was not great on Monday night. And I do worry about the quick turnaround and trying to find a way to generate more offense. But the plays were there to be made. They just weren't made, right? And they have a way to make them against the Rams. And, you know, I heard you talk to, to Whitworth about this. Like, the Rams just kind of aren't the same looking right. team right now. Um, they're kind of figuring out with different pieces how to do things. They're getting Stafford hit at a, at a much different rate this year, which again, older quarterbacks don't want to be hit. They play worse as they get hit. And I think with, with the Rams offense, you're kind of seeing the effects of a rebuilt offensive line trying to work through some things. And now you get a Niners pass rush, which is probably why the, these games have always sort of been close. While Niners have won, their pass rush takes over in these games. Eileen Niners here to cover the spot. 49ers have won six straight regular season games against the Rams. Rams, of course, beat the Niners in the NFC Championship yeah. game last week. All right, I know you have some futures bets. We'll get to those next time we see you. Jeff Schwartz, thank you for teaching me something, for letting me talk Both a little bit about Joe Burrow and everything. You are the best, and we'll talk to you soon. Yeah, hook get it your up, shirt. We'll get Conrad it for you. There company. you go. Jeez Louise. Uh, <laughs> we'll be back after this week. We're going to shut it down with some numbers. We've got some injury news for you as well. Big show with Darius Butler, Andrew Whitworth, and Jeff Schwartz. Back on Up and Adam's time to hit the lights. What does that mean? We like to shine a spotlight on a player who had a Hollywood-like outstanding performance in week three. Maybe somebody that did something off the field. I mean, CeeDee Lamb could have gotten it last night for helping that camera person up after he uh, scored that touchdown. That was nice. But today, as we wrap up week three and kick off week four, as we did our dolphins Bengals preview show here on Up and Adam's, Oh, we have some tweets, Conrad says. What do we got? Let's see. So these are some options, right? Uh, you guys have, I don't want to pick the Hit the Lights player. You guys pick the, pick the Hit the Lights player. Khalil Herbert, no question. Listen, listen, listen. He was on my waiver list. Khalil Herbert might be joining our show very soon. Keep your eyes peeled for that. Oh, yeah, Cooper Rush. I mean, that might be a Hit the Lights player. He, under the spotlight, he didn't care. It was the bright lights of of Monday Night Football. He's got, you know, Mr. Buck and Mr. Avon. Who cares? I'm going to ball out. And then we have Mark Brayford saying Jelani Woods. Two touchdowns from him. Two touchdowns. And I do believe, and I don't believe that I'm making this up. Somebody check this for me, and I'm sure Twitter will let me know. Brian, I think those were his two first catches in the National Football League for Jelani Woods. Those two first grabs were touchdowns. All right, but I'm going to say the Hit the Lights player is as I get veto power except to show up here and do my hair and makeup every morning. It's going to be A.J. Brown. My good, no, not A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith. That's what it's going to be, right? Is that who it is? A.J. Brown got all the love in week one. Yes, Devontae, the Heisman winner. He didn't sulk. He didn't say, give me the ball. What did he do? He balled out eight grabs, 169 yards, and a touchdown. It wasn't just the numbers. Multiple highlight reel catches. He plays setting the Eagles up for a big win against those commanders. So, Devontae Smith, we see ya, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.